shimming. Welcome to Building Knowledge 101. In this video, we will explain why proper shimming is critical for the performance of curtain wall systems. Now, Mitch and I was going to show you shimming when we looked at the anchor a little bit earlier. I want to talk about shimming now because this is something that's really misunderstood and there's different theories about it, but shimming is critical for curtain wall performance. These are horseshoe shims. This is what most people recommend using in the field. They're load bearing, they're non-compressible, and they, they're very durable, they're lasting, they'll support the weight of the curtain wall. Your proper shim locations are here. You want to shim on top of the anchor and under the vertical mullions. This is where you should be shimming a curtain wall. You're going to shim the mullion up, the anchor still inserted up inside the bottom of the curtain wall vertical but your anchors are between the top of the anchor and the bottom of the mullion. The only other place you would see a shim on a curtain wall is in a situation where you had a very, very large light of glass sitting on the sill. So the detail here is showing that we're gonna shim under the setting blocks where a very, very large light of glass is being used. Let me give you an example of that. This elevation, you can see this large light of glass and the setting blocks are at quarter points. And in a case like this, we're putting shims underneath where the setting blocks are in the glass. So the weight of the glass is going from the glass to the setting blocks to the sill directly to the slab. So we're shimming the sill, sill up. So all of the weight of the glass is being transferred right to the slab. And we're not relying on the sill member to support and carry the dead load of that large light of glass. So I mentioned the proper location of shims is going to be between the anchor and the bottom of the vertical member. Now here you can see the shims are underneath the anchor. Now the example I showed earlier of in reaction, remember that with the elevation is 25 foot tall? The in reaction was just over 1600 pounds at the top and the bottom. When you shim the anchor up, like in this picture, the fasteners that are holding the anchor down are designed to work in compression. But now with the anchor shimmed up, they're having to work in shear and compression. So that means that 1,600 pounds in reaction is going through the mullion to the anchor and through the bolts to the surround condition. So now you're putting all the pressure on that elevation is being supported in shear by the fasteners, which are not designed to work that way. This is why you don't want to shim underneath the anchor. Now, this is kind of extreme condition. I hope you never see anything like this in the field. This was so extreme that it was caught because the anchor was starting to deflect and bend under the weight of the vertical, and that was causing the joint to open up and separate and border to the interior. This, I'm not sure what led to this condition, but again, the point is shimming underneath the anchor is not what you need to do. It needs to be on top of it. That is all we have time for in this video. If you'd like to watch more of our 101 video series, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Conair Company, Inc.